I haven't worked on this one before, but I can tell you that's probably not good. We do have power between Common and Y1. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, we are going to check out cooler that's not cooling correctly. Not a lot been going on. So supposedly this thing is running warm. 40s to 50-ish range. So it is running snowflake and fans running. Let's see what we got. I haven't worked on this one before, but I can tell you that's probably not good. I would say it's got some issues with... Uh, Freezing up. Kind of a fancy hypergenic type of air filter thing, ain't it? They're getting better at building these, that's for sure. There's a compressor all hidden back in there. Looks like a cap tube system. see oil. That looks like, it looks oily. Bet we got a say, leaker. Bet we got a leaker. I, I guarantee it. You can see that brown there. It looks oily. So we can do one of two things. We can either melt it with hot water. So let's go ahead and get this melted. Got leaks on both sides of the coil there on the right and on the left, so it's it's a leaker. Gonna need to quote a new evaporator with we'll a capillary tube. We'll get them both quoted for right now. We're gonna go ahead and pull the charge and just weigh it back in fresh. Probably should make sure these fans are on. It's starting to get a little closer. Let's go ahead and check the fans, make sure they're all running. Yep, both fans are running. Okay, thought I could see that from the bottom or through the holes, but obviously not. Okay, let's go ahead and let this thing stabilize, get these racks back in here and see what we get, and we'll get them a quote, see if they approve it. All right, let's go ahead and check our info here. Hit the T1 sensor is running 57 degrees. T2 is running 37. So we've got a 20 degree evaporator differential between what's going in versus what's coming out. Uh, I wanted to check and see what our set temperature was. Set for 34, which really is getting it down there. Have less chance of it melting. Be a lot safer if they would do 35. So let's try that, because this is an off-cycle defrost. Now, granted, we need to know what the uh, differential is on it, which without going to get my book, I don't really know. It's usually about two to three degrees above and below it. Yeah, that's about as much you're gonna get in there. Now, if we wanna lock it, get to lock, go yes, boom, now it's locked. Nobody can get in there and screw with it. So now if they hit I, see, now they can't change it. So there you go. All right, looks like we are down to 39. They are going to get a quote on repair. I think they are gonna actually wait and possibly consider a new one, but that's what they said last year or two, which whatever. Um, so 
it's back up and going all right like i said we uh, got it going went through the history and we have replaced or we've quoted replacing it once and they didn't choose to do it um so this time he was like yeah just go ahead and juice it up we'll see how long it lasts i'm like so you don't want to quote no go ahead and quote it well it takes time to quote things so whatever uh we'll we'll give him another quote and uh see if they choose to do it those things are expensive so you know sometimes a few hundred dollars to a thousand bucks for a coil or whatever it is is a lot cheaper than maybe a four thousand five thousand dollar cooler just depends on where you buy your stuff at so anyhow it's gonna wrap this one up on to the next one guys all right so hopefully this is an easy one it's the end of the day and i want to go home this is a little gas station here so we've got the cooler that's getting all hit up with the cottonwood which is starving it out but that ain't why i'm here i'm here because it's warm inside the split air conditioner is pumping out heat like crazy suction lines cold i'm gonna say what's probably killing us here is the package unit here that's not running so let's try to do some quick checks here common sense stuff we've got filters that are kind of dirty the fan is running economizer oh. is closed filters like i said are a little bit dirty there probably no date on them Evaporator's clean. It's good enough for today. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see if we got juice on this. We do have power between common and Y1. So we know we're getting a call from the thermostat. Contactor does not have power. Let's see if we got power on here. 242, let's see what we got down here. This will probably reset that lockout deal. No, nope, it's not even three phase, single phase. Single phase. Always seen it on three phase equipment. CLO, compressor lockout. Kick it on now. Sure should probably run unless it's locking out from the pressure switch or something. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing at least brushed off quickly first. Get the largest particles and then we'll wash it from the inside out. This is probably one of the most common, easy to fix things, but unfortunately, nobody wants to do it. And these coils are a little mac, a little matted up and a little jack. They look like, yeah, it's barely making its way through. So it's probably two coils thick. And of course, nobody splits it. And then you got that inside coil down there on the inside. No one ever takes the cover off to get those. But we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll do it from the other side. I love this wand. It really blasts it in there. You can see the water coming through on the other side. I like to do that until I see perfectly clean water coming through, which this thing's dirty and you can tell that it's dirty because the fan cycle switch is shutting off and we're cooling it down that much. We did get that completely cleaned up, which it's a whole lot better than what it was. Okay, so this is what we're talking about, split and coil. This is what it, most people are too lazy to be able to do. So you've got a cap here on the side, caps them. See, you've got two sets of coils. You've got to take off this end plate right here, lift this up a little bit, slide it out, and then look at all that crap that's in between there. It's because nobody wants to do this. That's the reason why this gets constantly packed full of crap. It takes forever to clean. This gets you a little bit better look at it. You can see all that crap there and then the electrical crap that's all there. So we'll get this thing sprayed out. Otherwise, right now it's gonna clean out like a old fashioned, simple one, one sided uh, coil. It's really easy to clean once they got it. So the reason why they do that is because you can get it cleaner, easier. The problem is nobody wants to take the time to do it, unfortunately. You're about best off to go ahead and blast it straight down first, get this out of there. Otherwise you're just gonna shoot it right back onto the coil again. So once you've got the majority of it 
then you can go through it again. But for right now, I found it to be easiest just to knock it all straight down and then start working through it. That jet makes it nice, strong, tight pattern, gets down in there and just knocks it completely out. I don't care how much coil cleaner you use, it's not coming out. It's matted in between there and it will not come out. Now, if you kept it clean the whole time, the problem is one person will come through and do it like this, because I've done it before here, but I haven't been here for many years. And it wouldn't surprise me if the refrigerant's not low also, because you've built artificial head pressure up with this dirty coil, and that throws off the fact that it's low on refrigerant, and your capacity's lost. So even though it's been running, it's about the same equivalency of a fan con uh, cycle control. And as thin as that is, you can literally go as fast as what I'm doing. And it, like I said, it literally just blasts right on through. See some of that coming back through this direction. You can see how much crap is coming out. Even though we've cleaned it, look at it. It's still dirty. I'm a weirdo when it comes to getting coils clean. These people that kind of go, oh, yeah, bud, give me another beer. I got her from here. You're good to go. See ya. We've got it all back together. It's running, it's pumping out the heat again. Come back cold. I'm not worried about it then. This was grab this call before you come in type deal. And so we just did a quickie and moving on to the next. You know what I'm saying? Or actually, I'm just going to go home. So that's got to come in a little bit yet, but otherwise, We'll be about ready. Those are two of the most important keys you need for water. You need to have the one, it's a four-sided that you can get about anywhere. Then you need this one here for the uh, Zern, Zern ones. They've got a weird key and it will not fit any of these uh, square ones they've got. It's real super thin. So I'll just keep that up there. Get this thing round, wound up and we'll be good to go. All right, so we got everything filled out. Let's see if we can get back through this door here and check, see what kind of temperatures we're getting. Oh yeah, I can feel a huge difference in here. All right, so we're down to 75. So we're at 75 degrees on that one. And looks like we're about 79 on this one here. There we go. All right, well, It'll take a while, so let's get a signature and get out of here. Well guys, that's gonna wrap that one up. It's just the usual thing here. Um, the coils need cleaned, they're dirty from the cottonwood. The, uh, you know, you got so many of these service contracts that need to be done and you can only get to so many of them. Everybody wants everything done at spring and everybody wants it done at fall and they just don't work that way. We got them done, they're finished. I mean, obviously there was other things that would normally be done, but I'm not doing it at 5.30 at night. We're just got everything that was important completed and we cleaned the coils correctly. You can tell those coils have not been cleaned for quite a while, which there ain't nothing I can do about that. So on to the home range. I am not on call, so I'm going to go home and try to enjoy this weather. That's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Later.